All right, this is going to be my Docker plus Kubernetes demo. So here I have a directory um, inside the CDK. I am actually did a, did a favorite SSH, so I'm inside the VM. Uh, to kind of make that point, let's do this system release. All right, so you can see I'm running Red Hat Enterprise Linux here. And what I want to do now is do a Docker build, dash T per my node uh, v1 dot. All right, so I've already built that apparently. Uh, so I don't have to build it again, but let me do a Docker run. Uh, dash it dash p 8000 and then brr let's gotta spell this my node my node v1 all right get that guy running and by default since it is running on the cdk i have basically you can see it running right here okay and then if i want to do this okay if i want to do this now let's do a vi uh, vi hello okay let's change this from hello to dun, 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 hola. All right, and then we'll do another Docker build. Docker build uh, dash uh, dash t for my node v2. All right, so we have we're gonna have a, a tagged version one image and a tagged version two image. Uh, the version one image is gonna have hello. Version two image is gonna have hola. Uh, so you can see it's going through that build process now. So let's double check that. Docker run dash it dash p and dun 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 and then burr my node v2. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, and again that's running on 8000. All right, there's the Ola. So, so now if I want to run a few of these things, let's just actually go back to v1 here. If I want to run a couple, I can bring one up on 8000. I can bring one up on 8001. So you can see right here, here's my 8001, here's my 8000. And so, you know, if you want to run three of them at scale, this is about what it's like to do it kind of manually with just Docker run statements. Okay, so there's my third one. So I have three of these guys running. So if I do a Docker PS, uh, grep my node, you can see there's those three guys running right now. And I can stop them all individually and scale them up, scale them down just by doing Docker runs, Docker stops, things like that. Now let's kind of bring in the Kubernetes piece of this. This is where it gets a little bit more interesting. And let's see, let's see, who am I? Let's see if I'm logged in correctly. Okay, I'm admin right now. And that does kind of matter because when we're using Kubernetes, uh, the cube, uh, cube control uh, command, you want to be logged in as admin. Uh, and that way you can do all the things you wish to do as an admin. So watch, the first thing I'll do here is create a namespace. And so actually, let's do this. Let's do a VI cube namespace. So the namespace is fairly straightforward. You just declare it through the YAM right there, and then I can do this right here. I can say uh, one create namespace, execute that, come over here and hit refresh, and there's the cube demo right there. All right, so we're using the OpenShift web console over here because OpenShift sits on top of Kubernetes. You can treat it like a Kubernetes, and that's basically what I'm doing here is using the cube uh, control command against it. In this case, I added the namespace, and I have scripts right here to basically kind of cheat, and hopefully you won't mind, uh, but it makes it a little bit easier for me to remember my steps. I'm going to create a pod, okay? So the create pod is uh, kubectl command right there, namespace cube demo, run my node with the image burr my node v1 port 8000. So that guy's running right there on the replication controller now. And then I can easily expose a service associated with it. So the services are separated from the replication controller from the actual pod. And now if I do a kubectl dash dash namespace equal cube demo, get pods. There's the pods running. I can do get services. There's my services running. See, there's an actual cluster IP. That's the virtual IP address associated with the service. And there can be multiple pods behind it. Uh, but to make that point, let's do this right here. Okay, so there it is. Uh, so I can just curl that guy right there. But now let's scale up. So let's go with Let's go to three replicas. So just like before, where I had three Docker runs, this is essentially three Docker runs again. And now if I do my curl command, if I do it enough times, you should see random load balancing across the different host names. Because that's basically what's happening here is the host name is showing up. And I already have a script that does that. So let's just kind of run that real quick. And that's going to basically just, you can see the uh, random load balancing across the three different pods behind that same service IP. So that's pretty nice. You get load balancing, you get the service, you get the replication controller all that, uh, you get to scale those guys up for free. Um, and let's do this now. So I do have my, uh, I do have my two Docker images, Docker image, uh, whoops. I have a lot of Docker images, but let's do this, grep my node, 
There's the two we created earlier. And if we look at the script for rolling update, uh, cat, let's just, oh, let's just do that. Okay, it's very straightforward. Uh, cube control, namespace, cube demo, rolling update, my node, that's the node we had created earlier, then as the replication controller as well. And then we're gonna roll it up to V2, and then you can see the update interval, period, three seconds, okay? And um, I just have it in there as a script to comment it out. But let's do this, let's do this, okay? Let's do this, we're gonna do a, we're gonna do seven one. All right, we're gonna be monitoring that update as we go. Okay, so if this works out well, you can see we should be moving from V1, V2. This is just simply hitting that same service IP address, so you can tell the pods are behind the service. But as a new one comes to life, you'll see it gets the OLA, and there's the first OLA, but none of our users are interrupted, none of them are impacted. So basically you see it uh, bringing up a node over here and setting that behind the virtual IP address of the service, then it decrements this one, then it brings up a second one, and once it knows that second one is up and running, because it does a health check and verifies it, then it basically takes down this other one. And again, this is just a very straightforward example, but you can kind of see how it's actually doing the load balancing at the same time, rolling update with no impact, no negative impact to users. You just see the upgraded component in this case, see it saying hola instead of hello. And it looks like it's making its way through that you know entire process. We're now at, you know, we got most of our pods running on the other side. Take down this one. We should see only olas from this point forward. And then if we want to roll it back the other direction, we, we could. We could roll it back just by simply changing that command. Um, and if we just come in here and actually copy that command out. Let's do this right here. Okay. And I want to copy you. So let's copy you out. If I want to copy you, I come here and say, let's roll back to V1. There, and we'll go back the opposite direction. So we'll go back from olas to hellos, and you can kind of see it just completely undo the, everything that we just went through that process for earlier. And it looks like my script has run out down here. We'll just keep it running. So you can see it go from hola to hello. Uh, there's some other aspects of, of this, though, that are pretty inter interesting that you should also uh, understand. And that is, as so Kubernetes is monitoring the entire environment. It's basically saying, okay, you have this re replication controller state that you want. You have this rolling upgrade. And it's looking at these commands in a declarative way and then executing them on our behalf as a cluster manager. But what if I want to monitor my environment to ensure that things are staying up and running? Uh, so in my previous Docker run example there, I would have to kind of monitor those individually and do new Docker runs, bringing them up on different nodes. This is all running on a single node, a single VM in this case. And that's because that's how I wanted it. I'm running it, I'm running it on a single uh, virtual machine running here on my laptop. But now I can also, you know, you can see there's all hello. Um, I can also do things like this. So I can do kubectl namespace. Uh, helps if you spell namespace correctly. Cube demo. Get pods. Okay. Uh, helps if you spell cube correctly too. There's the pods. So if I come in here, let's see if this will work for me. Um, and delete pod, let's watch what happens here. So I wipe one out and you'd see that on the user interface there, it actually scrolled it down and scrolled it back up. Um, so let's try another one. Let's wipe out another one. Okay, kill another one. So you can see again, it will bring it back to life. So, and of course it comes up with a different node name. And then if I even eliminate this last one, these long node names will result in my rolling update but now if I delete one and Kubernetes discovers it's gone and it brings it back to life, it gives me a nice short node name. I guess I can run my script here to keep it going. So an example of itself healing and making sure the pods that I want are staying up and running. Okay, that's a simple Kubernetes demo and I have those scripts specifically at the GitHub URL. So GitHub, burst setter, repositories, and cube for Docker. And of course, all the, all the slides for this presentation are at the bit.ly link bit.ly cube for Docker, and then that'll expand out to the actual Google Docs for the slide deck that is associated with this presentation. All right, thank you very much.